Hello and welcome to the presentation I'm required to make as part of the application process for the doctoral program at National Taiwan University. And in the 10 minutes I've been allotted, I understand there are two things I must do. I must introduce myself and my research interests. Now, schematically, I've been thinking over how to approach presenting my life story in the most relevant way possible. And I would say that the progression has been reader, writer, teacher, and looking forward to the doctoral program. The idea would be to bring these three roles together, reader, writer, teacher, and develop each of them to the fullest extent possible. So let's begin with my origins. I was born in England and raised in a rural setting. I lived and worked in the same country as Dr. Johnson. William Shakespeare and D.H. Lawrence and growing up my primary interests were fishing, my dogs and walking and my engagement with literature began really with my interest in the legends of Robin Hood also from the area but my first encounter with literature proper was when my family were given a box of old books and in there I found Steinbeck's Of Mice and Men and after reading that Nothing was ever quite the same again. My lifelong engagement with literature had begun. For the next few years, it was all self-directed. It was whatever I could find in the shops in my town. But I was drawn most towards the works of Camus, Kafka, Dostoevsky and William Burroughs. And so inspired was I by this early engagement with great writing that I wanted to write myself. And so I began producing um, short stories of my own. And that was the start of my writing phase. And the first success I enjoyed was when I had a week of performances of my writings um, staged at the Burton Taylor Theatre in Oxford by the Oxford Drama Society. And the actors were from the National youth theatre. That week was a great success and fed my hunger for more literary success. But also I wanted to meet some real life writers my, myself. Up until then I'd only encountered dead ones and so I applied and was accepted to a very um, avant-garde art college. Dartington College of Arts had a great ratio between instructors and students. It was something like one professor for every six students on my tiny program. And there we were given a thorough grounding in the historical avant-garde. So I'm familiar with a whole range of texts that are outside of what would be typically included on an undergraduate English literature degree. Although I've also filled in all those spaces of what those students study to so have a very broad scope um, to my reading. While there we also had a critical theory component. So we engaged with the popular thinkers of the time who were Derrida, Deleuze and Guattari, Irigari, Helene Sissou, Walter Benjamin and others like that, Foucault. So alongside developing our own artistic practice there were those three strands. It was a really wonderful program actually when I reflect on what I gained from that. After that I began teaching but not English language or English literature. I had acquired significant skills in graphic design and producing um, multimedia content websites while I was at art school and so I joined a multimedia company afterwards and became a trainer. So that gave me some experience in educating people one-on-one um, -on -one and in small groups. And I traveled the country working with private individuals, um, businesses and public bodies. And I really enjoyed that too. It took me all over the UK, gave me my introduction to many of the uh, finest cities we have to offer. My own favorite being Edinburgh and I was made by the end director of that company. After a few years of that success, I decided I would use the money 
I've gained to travel. I traveled first to Ireland and then to the US for a couple of years and then down into Central America. And it was my years in Guatemala that were most transformative. I lived in a village in the highlands with a 98% Mayan population being exposed to a completely different culture to any I'd encountered before. And I was really so engaged by that, that I began studying Mayan civilization at the university there and also developing my Spanish skills to a high level. While moving around the world, I resumed my writing activities and each place I stopped in, I used as material for that writing. And so I had some political commentary published in the London Review of Books and I had historical pieces published um, in the countries I stopped in. And in 2007, I was lucky enough to have a short story I wrote selected for inclusion in Granta and the British Council's annual new writing anthology, Best Writing from the Commonwealth. And my contribution was there alongside Doris Lessing's in the same year that she was awarded the Nobel Prize. So I was extremely happy about that. In 2008, I finally made my first visit to Taiwan with a friend. I was here during the financial crisis. I kind of weathered the storm there. And it was in 2010 that I began another big round of teaching, teaching English this time in the bushy bands here, as many foreigners do. And I served my apprenticeship and more there. And when I got my APRC and it became financially viable to study in the universities here, I applied to NTU and thankfully I was accepted onto the graduate program. And this is when my long standing ambition of teaching literature as a career began to really come into view as an actual possibility. And that is why I'm applying first and foremost to the doctoral program to make that transition from teaching English for the purposes of language acquisition to teaching works of literature to students who are deeply passionate about that. With regard to my research interests, I think it's best if I describe my kind of process and then you'll get an idea of how it works and why I had such an enjoyable and fruitful time on the graduate program. I'll focus chiefly on my thesis as that was the most in-depth piece of research I did. And here was very much inductive. Um, I had texts and authors that I had a long-standing interest in. And then um, I entered with my supervisor into a dialogue and together we were able to abstract from these primary texts a number of research topics, or we could see them as research questions. And so I identified, I think, five debates surrounding global literature, translation, disability studies, narrative theory, and the philosophy of language. And I then began investigating the critical literature on each of these topics and using that knowledge to go back and see my primary text in a whole new light and provide much superior readings. And then with my supervisor, I would check that I was doing something intellectually worthwhile and it was rigorously argued. And the classes was much the same story, whatever period or topic the instructor um, was focused on, I could either look at the primary text they were presenting or tap into my own extensive knowledge and then begin again looking at that critical literature and providing fresh readings of these texts. And that's why I do have my own research interests, but I can also pick up new ones by listening to what my instructors expose me to. And I can see I'm just about to run out of time. And so I'm going to call a halt here and simply say thank you for listening.